All right, we are halfway through November. It is our first uh, presentation day today. It's also when our assignment six is due. And assignment six really combines a lot of our skills, right? It's our spot illustration with type design on a background. And all of these things are our own original ideas, right? I gave you kind of monster names to react to. So now we're going to deal with kind of touching up and making it as, as good as we can. We've got all the requirements. Now we want to think about how it's actually going to print. And that can have to do with surface textures. Like I like to have this, this dissolve texture. I'll remind you how we can do that kind of thing. How you can use brushes to do some touch-ups. And how you can do things like color holds in your digital coloring. Like I have for the blade here. And what a color hold is, it's kind of the final step of digital coloring, is it goes on top of your black line art. And it's called a color hold because in professional printing, the printer always prints black last. So in order to accommodate a color hold, they need to cut that part out of the film work for the black so that all the colors come through instead. Now, Color holds are really, really a basic idea. They just go on top of the coloring sandwich. So I think of them like a little olive and a toothpick you might put on the top of the bread, right? Because they go on top of that black line work. So if I want to make this sword look shiny, I can replace its black outlines with color, just like a Wonder Woman shiny lasso. And if we look at assignments and we scroll down to assignment five, we can be reminded about an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. Thank you. And in that exhaustive explanation of digital coloring, once you get past duotone, full spectrum, past flatting, we get to some of the special effects. So that's what I wanted to touch on here. So we left off with full spectrum color as a way to play with our coloring, right? Which basically says you can do anything you want, anywhere you want in your coloring. As long as it's behind line art, it's still digital coloring. That's just a really fancy sandwich. But this aspect, how do you make her gauntlets glowing and affect everything underneath like it's a real light source? That is on top of your line art. And that's what's called a color hold. I like Wonder Woman as an example because you'll see that her lasso will always have a color hold on it. So just think of this exact same illustration, which is just a pretty straightforward, a duotone, hard-edged illustration. I don't see a lot of soft-edged in it. There's a little bit on her thigh there. But otherwise, pretty, and a little bit on her, her mouth or her chin. But mostly this is a pretty hard edge, do a tone, you know, two colors for each local color kind of illustration. But imagine that it had the, uh, the lasso outlined in black, like her hair, like her skin, like her armor is outlined in black. And it would just kind of kill the whole vibe of the thing, right? Because it would just be a white lasso outlined in black. So instead, what the artist did is they selected all of the line art for the, the lasso, and then they duplicated it and then they did layer styles on top of it to replace its color with what's called an outer glow. So let's try that. I'm going to take this sword and I'm going to go to my line art which I have here which I can get from assignment 5 as well. And I'm going to select with my magic wand just the line art for the sword right above the hilt. And I have the cabinet open for tablets because it would be useful to be a little bit cleaner with this. Now I'm going to duplicate that onto its own layer. So just Command J. So then on that layer, 
I'm going to double click the layer on the gray and get to my layer styles. And just like we colored our typefaces, I can use color overlay. at 100% to replace the, the black with a color. Now gray isn't super exciting, so if I wanted to do the Wonder Woman thing, I might replace it with a yellowish orange. And then I might add an outer glow to it and really increase that size and that spread and that opacity so it really glows and what's nice about using those layer styles for it is notice I'll take the noise off so it looks a little cleaner though I like the noise but you'll see that now it's affecting not only the around the blade but it's actually spilling on to my other line art right it's affecting it just like in here, how the lasso, only the line art of the lasso was color holded, but it, you see how it's affecting the line art of her hand as well. Because with an outer glow, it's spilling beyond those edges. And you also have that slight effect with these little embers that are overlapping the line art and affecting them. So these are color holds as well in the digital color. Now, once I do that, you'll notice that my yellow looks kind of dead. And that's because often when you're doing glows, you really need to brighten the, uh, the color. And another thing you can do is use a gradient instead. So you can use a gradient that you can make really kind of bright. That red is a little deep. Maybe I'll turn that to a lighter color. The green, the blue, brighten up. And now you can see kind of the, the blue going through this kind of prismatic change. And then I can also do an inner glow just on this line art. So that's going to, I'll give it a little bit of yellow. God, I hate those green yellows though. Got to warm them up. But let's brighten it. Maybe a yellow like that. And then I have to grow it. You see, and now that yellow is going to affect the edges of my line art just a little bit. Let me take that outer glow down a little. Down in opacity, down in size. Because maybe I don't want the sword to glow quite so much. Maybe I just want it to, to kind of gleam. but I can also use noise as it spreads to kind of break it up. There we go. So it's a nice kind of soft transition. But outer glow is the only one that's going to spill onto other line art, right? Like the hilt right there. Now, what does it need to really glow or to really shine? So that's with black. That's with the shine on it. I think it needs like a little star glint, right? That breaks through. That's probably the most common kind of color hold you see is a little glint in the eye. So I can create a new layer. I don't always need to modify line art. I can just put something in directly as a color hold. And I just can draw a little star. Let's see, where do I want the glint to happen? Maybe right here on the blade. Let's draw a little 
glinty star shape, right? Then I'm going to say edit fill. This is on a new layer with white, 100%. There it is. That already is overlapping my line art, so it looks like a glint, but then we can add effects to that as well. And I can distort it, free transform it, get it to be exactly what I want. And then, this is what I love about using layer styles for coloring, like we did for our, for our text, is I can take all those effects, I can right click and I can say copy layer style on the layer. Just like when you right click and you rasterize a smart object, you can copy a layer style. And then I can paste it onto my star. Right click, paste layer style. And now that star has that same sort of glow but I don't want the gradient, so I can turn that off. And let's see, the color overlay, I want to be just solid white. And I want it to be at 100% opacity. And then I can move that glint around. I can put it right at the tip right there. See how I like that? Maybe on the, the spine, maybe right there. I can do multiples. I can throw it onto the, the helmet, the eyeball. I can duplicate it, put it everywhere, make it inspiring. Color holds galore. Glint, glint, glint. Talk about pizzazz. Wow, awesome. Am I overusing it? Absolutely. So this is a great way to kind of touch up little places that you're not so fond of in your illustration. To show that his armor's shiny. You can throw it on his thigh. Top of the helmet. Now he's blinding. Now what about the wing? If the sword has a color hold, shouldn't the wing not also be a different texture than white. So how would we do that? We go to the line art layer. So I'm putting lots of olives on top of this coloring sandwich, right? So my line art layer, I'm calling my touch up layer. And I'm going to select just the wing. I can get a little bit extra and then cut down to it. And I duplicate just that, Command J. And then I can just say copy or paste layer style onto it. Right? And that did most of the wing for me, but I had some of it that I didn't copy over because it was free floating. So then I have to go back to my line art and select it. Just the black. Okay, that's all of it. Duplicate it, bring it up, and then right click, paste layer style. Now, the other thing I like that you can do is I can take both of those and I can merge them together, and that will rasterize it all onto one layer, and it will rasterize the layer style as well when you combine layers. You can also right click and say, rasterize the layer style. So it's just pixels that then you can delete. So I can use my lasso now and just, I don't want the wing to glow. I just want it to have a different texture. 
So like 